Dear God, our Heavenly Father, you are faithful, true, and worthy of praise. We invite your holy presence to grant us the blessed assurance of salvation. Make us ambassadors of your kingdom. Give us the joy of seeing more people giving their hearts to Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Uh, scripture reading today with, is uh, taken from Matthew uh, chapter 13, 31 and 32. 31 says, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. It will work. God bless this word. Thank you. Good morning and a happy Sabbath. Can you hear me back there? Okay. Praise the Lord. I was assigned by Pastor Chen Rong to preach on the parable of the mustard seed. So I entitled today's sermon is From Minute to Infinite. Earlier on, Pastor Egan, Pastor Chen Rong talks about the parable of the sower. What's the meaning of the seed that is mentioned in the parable of the sower and the mustard seed? There is a difference. According to the parable of the sower, the seed is actually the message about the kingdom. What about the mustard seed? When it comes to the parable of the mustard seed, the kingdom of heaven is the mustard seed. So there are two different kinds of seed. One is the message about the kingdom. The mustard seed is about the kingdom itself. Whereas the parable of the sower, so collective seed, that means they are plural. They can be many. And the parable of the mustard seed refers to a single seed. That's the main difference. You know how small is the mustard seed? It is as small as 0.1 cm. And it can grow up to 9 meters. Can I ask the young people, Tasha, from 0.1 increase to 9 meters, how many percent growth is that in terms of length? Can you do a calculation or somebody help her? Some people who are good in maths shout out the answer, please. Ah, who, who say that? Uh, Elder Billy. Ah, nine thousand. And what happened if the single seed of mustard grow to become nine meters? It has many birds. It can rest and it provides shade. So the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. It, the mustard seed, there is life. That, that's why it can grow. And God put, every, put life into every seed. So it's very important to understand there's life. Otherwise, it will not grow. And it takes thousands of seeds To have sustain, substantial weight. You can see how small the seeds are. Now, I want you to focus on the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. They talk about the parable of the mustard seed, but they focus differently. Matthew chapter 13, verse 31, it says, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sow it in his field. The rest, I don't have to read because it's the same. Look at what Matthew focused on. A man took and sowed it in his field. It's a very personal thing, right? 
Whereas in the Gospel of Mark, it says when it is sown on the ground. So that's the difference. When it is sown on the ground. It, it doesn't talk about a man. It talks about a ground referring to general places. What about the Gospel of Luke? The Gospel of Luke talks about a man who took it and put it in his garden. Ah, now we can see there's a person, he took it and put it in his garden. That means his own backyard. Let's put this together and see what's the difference. Mark chapter, chapter 4, verse 31, it says, when it is sold to the ground, not referring to any person. Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 says, a man took it and put it in his field. Okay? He, the field is not the place where he stayed. Luke chapter 13, verse 19 says, a man took and put it in his garden, referring to his own house. Do you see the development of this uh, parable? The three comparison? What does it mean? I remember in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, before the ascension of Jesus, he said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me about my kingdom in Jerusalem, referring a man who took the seed and put it in his garden and to Judea and Samaria, to the field. A man took and sowed in his field, and to the ends of the earth, it is sown onto the ground. So it is talking about the gospel that is preached, that people can hear, people can see. So when you preach the gospel, first preach it in your home. Then preach it to your constituents, your neighbours, and then be a missionary to the world. So all of us are actually sowers, missionaries. Some bring their family members to church. Some bring their neighbours, their associates, and others, they are missionaries in different fields. So the ground refers to the whole world. The field can refer to the region, the Southeast Asia. The garden can refer to Singapore. Or, the ground can refer to Singapore. The field can refer to woodlands. That's where I'm staying. And the field can refer to where I stay personally. To my family members, to my relatives, and to my neighbours. So what, what was the background when the Gospel of Mark talks about the ground. The background, the parable of the mustard seed was preached after the parable of the sower, after the parable of the light that is under the basket, and then the parable of the growing seed then talks about the parable of the mustard seed. So the purpose of the Gospel of Mark is to tell us when we sow this mustard seed, we must first be the light of the world. You cannot live in darkness when you sow the mustard seed. You must have Jesus abiding in your heart. Jesus becoming real. They see it in your speech and in your action. Then what is the context of the Gospel of Matthew when he sowed it in his field? It was mentioned after the parable of the sower. It was mentioned after the parable of the weeds and the tares. Referring that when you sow seeds, sow the mustard seed, when you preach the gospel about his kingdom, you are not always successful. There will be disruptive works of Satan. 
you will be discouraged. And you have to pray when you really witness for Jesus. And it's not easy. And what was the context of the book of Luke when it talks about putting the mustard seed in his garden? It is talked, it is preached after the parable of the barren fig tree. Meaning, this seed, when you sow it, it is not your job to make it grow. But definitely there will be result bearing fruits of righteousness. Anyone like to say amen to that? Yeah, thank you, Jimmy. Yours is the loudest. In this parable, Christ would teach us that we individually to be sowers of the seed, referring to the kingdom of heaven. No one is to be idle or indifferent. Each has his or her work to do according to his entrusted capabilities, that these capabilities are to grow. If your capabilities, if what you sow doesn't grow, it doesn't come from God. It comes from men. Now, how many of you have read about this tycoon, billionaire, an Indian tycoon called Ratan Tata? He died at the age of 86. Anyone read about this? Oh, very good. He built his company or his conglomerate rate from 4 billion to 100 billion. So it was actually the largest, one of the largest company in India. But unfortunately, he cannot bring a single cent when he died. The world measures success by how rich you are, by how much money you have made. And this concept has creeped into some of the churches where they say that your church attendance will show that you are successful in preaching the gospel. The more members you have, the more successful you are. Is that so? Amazing Grace, page 17 says, but the mustard seed was to grow and to spread forth its branches throughout the world. When the earthly kingdoms whose glory then fill the hearts of men should perish, the kingdom of Christ remain, would remain a mighty and far-reaching power. Amen? The Jews, through the preaching of Abraham, spread throughout centuries. And God's people, God's chosen people, the Israelites, were not faithful. And as a result, God allowed them to be conquered by heathen kings and they live in heathen empires. But Christ, within a few decades, it grew. Do you know that within 200 years, it spread to the whole Roman Empire and the church and the whole empire became Christian. Christianity grew. It met with great persecution. It met with great deception, compromise. It grew within less than two centuries. God must be in it. The preaching of the gospel about the kingdom of God by the 12 apostles after the day of Pentecost was the work of the Holy Spirit. It was like a mustard seed with life in it. Somebody tell me, what is this lady doing? Who is she? Call Porter, yeah. Another name for Call Porter? Ah, I can't hear. Yes. Elder Billy, you are always right. Maybe give other people a chance to be right. 
called pottering or literature evangelism. Do you know that in 1987, when I received a call to study in uh, Southeast Asia Seminary, which is part of SAUC or Southeast Asia Union College, one of the requirements for seminary students is to spend three months doing core pottering to become a literature evangelist. So we don't do any studies. We spend three months selling books. And what kind of books? Bible stories, the life of Jesus, health books, and especially this book, You and Your Health. How many of you remember this encyclopedia? Yeah, quite a few hands. Okay. I remember there's one core porter. Her name is Madam Chow. Every day when she went out for core pottering, she will be selling one set of encyclopedia and then she will stop work. Every day, without fail. So I heard about her story, how she sold so many books. I want to follow her example. I went to all the places, offices, shops, but I was not Madam Chow. I was a young man trying to sell books. My motive was not correct also during that time. It was not mature. Because I was told if I sold more than 3,000 worth of books, I will get scholarship for the next semester. You know, I faced with a lot of difficulty. I first took out this book, You and Your Health. They flipped, they are not interested. I took out a cheaper book, also health book, they are not interested. Then I took out magazines, they are also not interested. I was very discouraged. <sighs> I lost 2 kg, you know, in 3 months. Going up and down, door to door, knocking, I had to be thick skin. I was laughed at, ridiculed, I was chased out. <sighs> One day I was having my lunch, somebody kept staring at me. It's a man, eh, by the way. Then I look at him, and he looked at me. I started to go to his table and introduce myself. I did the same. I took out the most expensive book, less expensive, and then the magazine, he turned his head, he's not interested. Until I took out this book, Bible Readings for the Home. This is one of the cheapest books, $15. Uh, way back in 1987, is quite a substantial amount. It's a paperback. I tell you, fantastic. I only brought two samples and I sold off. The next day, I brought three. I sold off. I, the following day, I brought four. I sold off. Then I brought five. I sold off. I brought six. I sold off. Then I say, maybe I should bring ten. I brought ten. I will not stop until I sold off. I brought twelve and I sold off. Anyone say amen? I tell you, this book has 30 vital topics, very good for cell group leaders. It talks about basic teachings of the Bible, who Jesus was, the Ten Commandments, and then the last day events. Huh? My brother Thomas, last day events on the sanctuary message, Daniel and Revelation. Wow. Then I developed the the experience and skill on how to promote this book. I sold it within two months. I sold off everything that they have in stock and they have to reorder. After they reorder, I sold it again. Then later on, they don't have any more paperback. I have to sell the hard copy. The hard copy was $100. Wow. I say, how to sell $100? During that time, 1987, $100 is a lot of money. Eh? 
So what happened? I went to an uh, insurance agent's office. And during that time, you can just walk in, you know. Nobody asks you, you got appointment or not, no. But most of the officers that I went, I always meet with the secretary or the receptionist. They w I was not allowed to go in. But I went to the insurance agent in Great Eastern, Prudential and AIA. I went there. So one day I was going to one of the office. The, a big guy with uh, spectacles, with, he's quite rugged looking. Then I was told he was a manager. He said, yes, can I help you? He was talking to somebody, provided training. Then I said, I'm here to sell a good Christian book. Then he told his uh, friends or his employees, wait, let me talk to this gentleman, that's me. Then he brought me to his office. He was having a cigarette in his hand and said, yes, I'm here to sell you a Christian book. Yeah? Uh, this is a very good book. Would you like? Yeah. Uh, but it's expensive, you know. How much? Hundred dollars. I write you a check, okay? Wow, so within less than a minute. And that was in 1987. 30 over years ago. And people who bought this book will study about the truths of the Bible, the last day events. And today, when I talk to Christians from another church, from other churches, I told them I'm a seven-day Adventist, I keep the Sabbath. You know what they say? They say Sabbath is actually on Saturday. We have been keeping it all along, and Christians nowadays don't say Sabbath day is Sunday. They say Sabbath day is on the seventh day. Just last week, I was talking to a Christian. I told him, I'm a seven-day Adventist. We worship on Saturday because it's the Sabbath. Yeah. They know. The preaching of the first angel's message, fear God and give Him glory. Worship Him who made the heavens and the earth, the seas and the waters. Second angel's message will be preached very soon. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Christians all over the world will soon realize that this Sabbath, counterfeit Sabbath, it's not the right day. It's actually a day to worship the sun god. It was like a mustard seed growing from strength to strength and we see the results today. To sow the seed of truth by a few well-chosen words may appear to be but a small beginning. But that word spoken from the heart may take root, spring up and bear the abundance harvest of truth. What do you say? Yeah. You know, God always chooses the weakest of the weak, the smallest of the small, to fulfill His will. God chose Saul as king from the smallest tribe, Benjamin. And Saul said, how can I? But I am a Benjamite from the smallest tribe of Israel. And it's not my clan, the least of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin. Why choose me? And then when the Israelites were in trouble, Gideon was called. The angel spoke to Gideon. Then he replied, pardon me, my Lord, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. When you realize that you have no power, but if you are willing to do God's will, God will take over. Amen? And then God, the Lord Jesus, in Luke chapter 12, verse 32, He said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. The kingdom is given to those who are small because they do not depend on their own power. They depend on the power of the Holy Spirit to do His will. And in fact, in the last days, the devil, the dragon who was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. The dragon is not angry with those who are 
breaking the law. The devil is not angry with those who do not bear the testimony of Jesus, but he's angry with this remnant of the seed. Is remnant big or small? Small. We see throughout the Bible, God uses small things. The least, the smallest, the weakest, the less intelligent. God, not often or most of the time, don't choose PhDs to preach the gospel. He chose fishermen. He chose the tax collectors which regarded as sinners during that time. And look at our population when our church was founded way back in uh, 1863. By then, our church was only 3,500. Nothing compared to the time when there was a great disappointment. The Millerite movement was half a million. But when Jesus did not come, many of them left. But the 3,500 remained and start to grow. And that was the population during that time of 1.3, was it million or trillion? Trillion. Billion, eh? or 1.3 billion, yeah. When I was baptized in 1979, our church was still very small. It was only 3.5 million. Okay, it was only 3.5 million. What happened? Today, our church is 2.8 million. We have 100,760 churches, 175 congregations, and it's still growing. And this statistics is last year's statistics. And this 22.8 million, I think it's already 23 million. 41 consists of male, 53 consists of female. So for the male, you have many choices, okay, for your life partner. You have more choices, rather, compared to female. And we have 9,580 nine schools. They are in elementary or primary, secondary and post-secondary. And then we have 2,136 hospital sanitariums and health clinics, 57 publishing houses throughout the world, and 22,258 literature evangelists or call porters spreading the gospel. And our church is really like the mustard seed small from the beginning and it grew. The branches spread. Our church spread in 212 countries in the world. By the way, eh, uh, this is the time where you can take out your phone and scan. Why? Because when you scan, you will be able to find out more about our church and about last day events and about how to uh, find out the teachings of our church and how to share this mustard seed teaching. And then you will go to this website where there are questions and answers. You can do a search. Okay, everybody? But by the way, I don't read it now. <laughs> Continue to listen to me. Once you scan, keep it after the worship service, then you can watch. Okay, everyone? Done? Uh, Jimmy, done? Ah, good, good. When God promised Abraham, he made a covenant with him. He said, I will multiply thy seed as stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. By the way, when he made this promise, how old was Abraham? How old was Sarah? They were beyond 
childbearing age. Nobody thought that Abraham could have so many descendants, so many children. But because God is there, God, when He touches you, you can be dead, you will become alive. You can be small, you become big. If you are weak, you become strong. Oh, we need Jesus. You know, Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23, this is a very powerful promise. And this promise is being fulfilled today. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In those days, 10 people from all languages, nations, will take firm hold of one Jew by the hem of his rope and say, let us go with you. Because we have heard that God is with you. Oh, God has a remnant who preserved the true teachings of God, who beheld God's glory full of grace and truth. Many churches just have grace. They don't have truth. We must be students of God's word because Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And you know what? The promise of Abraham is for us. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29 says, And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That means you will inherit your descendants. Our, we are spiritual Israelites. Our descendants are what? Followers and adopters of God's kingdom. And this will grow because we are faithfully sowing seed. It may start small, but it will grow. Patriots and Prophets, page 169 says, For the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Do you know that one day, Although we are small, we become kings and priests of the Most High God. Do you know that? It started small when Jesus said, Don't be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. I go back. And this kingdom, talking about the whole heaven, uh, it's not just the earth, it's, just, it's not just the solar system, it's not just the Milky Way galaxy, it's the whole universe. You know, our church is small, one of the smallest denominations in Singapore as well as in the world. And when we recite here, we are our, in Singapore, we are the 20th smallest country on earth. You know Earth, how big in the solar system? It's the fourth smallest planet in the solar system. You know how big is the solar system? The solar system is a star. In the Milky Way. Milky Way is just one galaxy. So the solar system is like a mustard seed, smaller than a mustard seed, when you look at the whole Milky Way. The Milky Way is like a mustard seed among trillions and trillions of galaxies in the whole universe. Wow! And one day, being small, we will rule the trillions of galaxies in the whole universe. What do you say? Yeah. Look at it. Look at the earth, how small it is. It's very small. Look at the earth again. Now, look, let's look at the sun. When, when the earth is compared to the sun, it's like a mustard seed, very small. And, all, and the sun and the, all the nine planets, they are the solar system. And we are just one of the stars in the Milky Way. 
And this is one of the star, one of the biggest star in the Milky Way. Look at the solar system. Can you see or not? It's one pixel. It's so small. Okay? You want to look at the Milky Way? The Milky Way is 125,000 light years in diameter. And in the Milky Way, there are at least 200 to 400 billion stars. And where is our solar system? Cannot find. It's so small. Isn't that amazing? That Jesus, who created all these stars and galaxies, they are interested in you. Just Adam and Eve, they sin and send the Creator to save this little speck of dust. How much is God's love to us? Even angels in their unfallen nature, they cannot understand God's love. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. And, you know, God's, uh, God's throne is in heaven. Heaven is at the furthest end of the universe. And one day, He is going to come to a small galaxy called Milky Way, and then he will come to a small star called solar system. And then he will choose earth to build his capital city. Amen? Yeah, very weak, amen. Are you at all? I am. And Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 says, Jesus had made us kings and priests unto God and his Father to be glory and dominion forever and ever. No wonder the prophets, patriarchs and prophets say the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. God chose something smaller than a mustard seed in the whole universe to make us great. No wonder Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, eyes have not seen nor ears heard nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Wow. Do you love God? Do you love Jesus? Yes, Anna, I see your hand. The rest are raising their hands in their heart. I love Jesus. I want to be there. I want to co-reign with Jesus. And this is permanent success. I may not be a CEO in a $100 billion company, but definitely I'm one of the king to rule one of the galaxy. There won't be enough people to fill the whole heaven when we rule the whole universe. And probably you and I have to be in charge of a few galaxies. Otherwise, it's too big. Do not be afraid, little flock, even though our church is small, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. And Jesus started as the mustard seed, conceived by the Holy Spirit. And then when he was 12 years old, he had a calling. And he talked with the teachers of the law. And when he was 30, he was baptized and the Holy Spirit descended on him and he began his ministry. And then he first called the 12 disciples. They were a little flock. Jesus performed healing. He taught. And then he reasoned with the Pharisees and the scribes. He performed the greatest miracle of healing Lazarus, who was dead for four days. And later on, they were determined to kill him. He was put on trial and he was crucified. And Jesus predicted in John chapter 12, verse 24, Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of the wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. 
But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Do you know that a mustard seed, before it can become a tree, it has to die? It is a special life from one life form to another life form. 9,000% increase. I'm going, I think it's going to be more than that when we preach God's kingdom. Amen? You may be small, but God destined you to do great things. And then when he was crucified, Jesus said, I have the power to lay it down. I have a power to take it up. And he was resurrected. And then when he was resurrected, the 12 disciples missed him. They saw him going up. And right now, he is at the right hand of God waiting to come. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he said, And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples unto me. Because he will make us kings and priests unto God his Father. And in Revelation 19 verse 16, talks about when Jesus comes on his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is the main king. The kings are us, the saints. Today, how many of you would like to preach the kingdom of God? Your small acts of witnessing, your little deeds of kindness is like a small seed, but it will grow. And one day, Jesus will bring you to heaven to co-reign with Him throughout eternity. How many of you will have this desire? Praise the Lord. Congregation receive the benediction. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we have heard your heartwarming message that your glorious kingdom, which started small, has grown from strength to strength and will continue to grow beyond our imagination. And now, may God the Father bless you with a fruitful ministry of telling the world that Jesus is coming soon to set up his eternal kingdom. May God the Son, the King of Kings, bless you with the impending assignment to make you co-rulers of the countless galaxies in the entire universe. And may God the Holy Spirit ignite a fire in your heart to utter well-chosen words telling your friends and your family that Jesus is ready to reign in their hearts as Lord and Saviour. And may the Lord bless you with these words of the king. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pronounce these blessings. Amen.